So guys, scale up show. What is it? Episode seven, eight, seven, 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 seven. seven. Yeah. about stress. Yeah, I mean, big word. <laughs> yes, stress. Very primary. big word. And I learned from Jeff Bezos that stress primarily comes from not taking action or for something that you can have some control over. And I think that's almost exactly what it is. Yeah, it makes sense as well, right? When you think about it. Yeah. Like the worst thing is when you you know you got to do something and you're just putting it off constantly. I think that's what causes a lot of stress because you know, okay, there's something that you need to get done by a specific amount of time or by a certain deadline. And because you're not doing it, because you're putting it off, that for me, at least that for me, that's what causes a lot of stress. Yes, and, and I think that uh, as, an, as some extra thing is, for example, for e-commerce owners, what I see, they have also a lot of stress because they, they think they have control over all the numbers, yeah. but they actually don't. So. Um, at the end of the year, their accountant says, oh, it looks nice on your revenue, but the profit was maybe not so high as you expected. And that's also that they are constantly in their mind thinking, okay, I have everything. Eh? I have my Google Analytics, I have my Shopify dashboard, but it's not always configured well. So they don't have all data inside and that gives them also stress because they never 100% know, okay, where's my, where, where's my traffic come from? Where's my, what's my most important traffic source? What, what, where's my, what's my most important product, for example? They, they're missing some data. And that's also what I think was uh, some stress coming from. I mean, I think it just comes kind of together with, you know, with the quote you said from Beatles as well. Like, I think stress needs to just, the word itself, kind of just play it up. So think it look, for example, procrastination, I think something kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah. Because it's like, hey, uh, a lot of people know they have procrastination, but I think then the stress kicks in. And if you know you're doing it and you kind of know you're working towards something that's not happening right now. Yeah. And that's where then kind of control comes in. I think it's super important that you do realize with the example you just gave, what can I control and what can I, uh, yeah. can't I control? Because people, in my opinion, always kind of feel like they try to control the uncontrollable and they do not control what is controllable. Yeah, yes, yes. And and, and what you see when people making to-do list, action list, and then they have too much things on their to-do list. Yeah. I make also that mistake too much times. So what you mostly can only do three really good things a day. Yeah, yeah. Say, and that's why you always see, you know, uh, like the big CEOs, like they always say, they only take three, four meetings a day. And it is not just because they become lazy or they need more free time, it's that they realize, okay, I have such a time span a day where I can have full commitment, yeah. and then yeah. I'm gonna put that time into the stuff that is controllable, where impact is needed, and then the rest kind of comes there. And I think that's yeah. also where like delegation, stuff like that comes into play, because then that's basically what will allow you to get to that point. Yes, yes, and, and don't uh, make everything too perfect. And what, what, I, yep. what I see in, in my agency is that sometimes my customers want to make it too perfect. And I think, okay, yep. but yeah, you can make it too perfect and we need to wait a week longer to get it done or just send just it out now, now and yeah. get results. Uh, I mean, uh, Eric Rice, the lean startup. I mean, I think it says it all. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, you know, you need to make, make, make uh, decisions there pretty quickly. And then, yeah, you can actually think you have to reframe a little bit also your, your mindset as well which is just something that either, I guess some people are lucky to have it from the start. Cause I definitely feel like it is something you can learn yourself. Obviously it's, it's never going to be perfect. You can't wake up every day uh, feeling you can control every point. You know, I think stress is in my opinion, it's healthy. It's always something that helps you to, you know, kind of kick you on the butt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, and, and, and you have maybe some, some tools maybe can, uh, who can help you to get your, your planning done because it's mm -hmm. mostly planning. Yeah? If you have your, uh, a really good daily schedule, for example, for yourself with the most important things and make maybe a weekly schedule, it makes it much easier to get control over all the yeah. things you need to do. But as an online entrepreneur, you have to do so many things, uh, uh, mm -hmm. the social media part, but also the business part. And yeah. 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 I think that's where it kind of, you know, the you know, funny, like kind of the, the IPAs come in, the yeah, income producing income activities, yeah. not, not your beer, but your income <laughs> producing activities. And it's like, you know, that's kind of like, if you know what they are, then yeah. that's where you can kind of put your time in and then build build around that. Yeah. I think yeah. there's like a problem written down as a problem half as well, right? So that's why I know there's a lot of tools out there, like Notion, there's templates and stuff like that, but I still write my to-do list, like physically pen on paper. Um, and I, Obviously, because it's a paper, like there's only so many things you can actually write down before the, the page is filled, which also makes me prioritize, okay, like what things do I actually want to get done this particular day? What things actually need to be done? Because there's a difference between things that I want to get done and things that actually need to be done. That's obviously yeah. the income producing activities obviously need to be prioritized. Um, and then, yeah, just making sure that there's only a specific amount of things that you focus on each day. Um, and then everything else 
will either be automated, delegated, or eliminated if it's not important. Yes, yes, and, and there's no tool what's, what, what, what will fix your to-dos, right? It's only no. a schedule or exactly. a list or whatever, and, and, and you need to use the tool what you, what you like the most, what's easy to use, if it's pen and paper or I have Momentum in my Chrome browser. Oh, yeah. And I'm, yeah. I'm, and yeah. I'm trying uh, Akiflow at the moment. It's quite an amazing tool because that's also... Um, uh, it's the only the first to-do list what I saw was also after the day, he said, okay, did, did you, you do this. And it gives you an overview. It gives you satisfa- satisfactions for yourself. Okay, I did a lot today, for mm-hmm. example. Most to-do lists, you click it away and then it's gone. Yeah. And but yeah, that's a skill. Like, I think planning itself is this viable skill everyone yep. should really hone in and something you should continuously you know try to work on because i always feel like people think they know how to plan because they have an agenda but the majority don't have a damn clue and that that's where it kind of goes wrong you know and i think it's like because you, you kind of have to kind of have the conversation today it's like oh yeah we want to change this and this because i don't know the revenue is not doing well in this country but then the next day when you were going to commit to the plan all of a sudden already doing something else because something else came on their schedule and like subconsciously, if you go and you recognize you're doing those things, which there's going to be a lot of people who do so. Like you can sit here right now and say to yourself, oh yeah, I'm good at planning, but I can guarantee you're going to write something down today. You wake up tomorrow and never look at it again. And I think that's where you yeah. kind of need, you know, where I think I always like the funny, funny thing where I make the distinction between is if you look at golf, because if you go and try to hit the golf ball, it all comes down to small things in your brain. So that you do the same swing, you have your hand placement. And this is with things here as well. Like you need those mind triggers that help you to remind you to do this and do that. Yes, yes. yes. Well, this, what you're saying is super easy to fill your calendar with a lot of things to yeah, do, but yeah. you need to actually do it. And that and that's the biggest mm-hmm. sort of, that I see to something by myself that I too much things on one day, for example. Yeah. I, I now focus only to three items in my schedule and to get it done and then add the extra one. I mean, daily habits, like small wins. Yeah. Uh, st- start with that you know like don't go and say now okay boom tomorrow I'm going to do five things just write down one thing go and do that and then move on yeah yeah what do you guys think of um, the eat the frog concept of doing like, the most difficult thing at the start is that something that you guys are proponents I would, of I would always because I know yeah. for myself is for me like the procrastination will always kick in and I'm going to do the easy things first yeah. and at the end of the day kind of the thing I technically should have done that day yeah. is still on the plate because you put it off it. so yeah. The moment you wake up, when you have all your stuff done, go hit that straight away because it makes the rest of the day so much easier. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Usually yes. I will start off with like one small thing that I can quickly tick off to get the ball rolling and then it's the, mm-hmm. it's then it's yes. the frog. Because it's mainly just, it does so much damage to your brain. Like if you say, let's say I'm going to wake up at seven o'clock, then you wake up at seven and you stay to 10, you stay to 7.15, you technically have already screwed your entire day over. Yeah. Because you gave your brain the satisfaction to to dive in to stay another 50 minutes and the entire day then it's gone yeah. because the upper hand is on the wrong side yeah, yeah. I agree and it's so detrimental that people don't even realize it but it's crazy yeah yes and of course important uh, we discussed, discussed it earlier I think in other podcasts but yes uh, your time management is also uh, time is the most valuable thing you have one of the most yeah. uh, time will never go come, come back so uh, don't waste your time on social media, for example, or uh, just to remove the apps. If, if, <laughs> yeah. if you look every day on Instagram, just remove the app from your phone, for example. And yeah. uh, and I see it, and especially in Europe but with LinkedIn, <coughs> uh, so, so many entrepreneurs are on LinkedIn. And I and if my VA, I never post on LinkedIn. My VA posts on LinkedIn, and and I see the likes coming in from so, so much people in the first hours. And I think, why do you have time to like? It's like yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Waste of time. <laughs> yeah, but but I think that's always something I would like in general when it comes to social media it's like there's no point for you to go and follow your favorite influencer like there is no value no that that is going to give to your life like you know follow legit your friends and then what i always do is like you can go to someone you can click on mute you can legit mute posts and stories yeah and there's nothing there for you to look at no exactly. and that will fix your entire problem yeah it's funny you should say that actually because when i sort of got started on instagram i'd do that i would follow like influencers and people <laughs> i'd look up to and now it's more of a friends and network kind yeah. of platform like people that i've connected with or i want to connect with i will follow and exactly engage with but then like the big influencers the people that i used to look up to or get motivation or inspiration from like i no longer follow because it's like you legit wake up and the first thing you do is you go and look at i don't know like the, the goal ronaldo scored or something and yeah, you see yeah, him yeah. celebrate it's like okay great man what have i what have i gained by yeah watching what's this? exactly yeah. 
Yes, yes, they also make it to entertain their following and and to get you stick on the platform. Obviously, you yeah. know, hey, and like for us, you know, we're uh, we're, we're we're on the advertising side, obviously. Yeah. You know, so it's like, yeah, it's a little bit two sided with us saying this, but you know, like I always say, you need to use social media and don't let it use you. It is yeah. a very important thing between that. For me, social media just just a business thing. Hundred uh, percent. Yes, and of course, friends are following me, but I'm not super active on social media and. I think yeah, it's it's nice for to have the business to run the ads to get some exposure online, but not and, and not someone would who, uh, at the lunch uh, checking Instagram or something. No, no. I think it's funny because obviously all three of us are in the social media space, and all three of us have the same opinion that it's not actually good to be on social media for that long. You know, we obviously use it purely to advertise other people's businesses or to gain exposure, but social media at its core will waste a lot of your time if you get sucked into it. And I think yeah. that's also what causes a lot of stress because if you're, let's say you have like 12 hours a day to work on a business and four or five of those hours even you're spent scrolling social media, you know, where that is, whether that is educational content or motivational content or not, it's still the same thing. You're still wasting away the hours that you could have been using working on exactly. the business and actually producing you know, income and for the business. Even yeah, more yes. so subconsciously you always go and compare to the other person you're exactly. looking at and yeah. you're going to get envy because you're not where they are. Exactly. And, and the problem with all the platforms, I, 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 they are so well developed to, that you get stick in the app. Or of course. For yeah. example, I think YouTube is my, 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 uh, maybe the most easy example because if you watch one video, sometimes I need to search something. I need to uh, uh, some, uh, yep. how tool works. And of course, you can read it, it's but sometimes the, the video is faster. Yeah. And I don't pay for YouTube because I want to see the ads. I want to see what's happening. <laughs> I'm so, look, okay, the first 15 seconds already wasted with on ads. Yeah. And then, then, then there's the YouTube video, always too long. My most instructional videos. Uh, yeah. what, Intro, what, 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 always yeah. at least 10 minutes because yes. then you get the maximum yeah. uh, CPM. Yeah, yeah, so the quality is always um, not perfect. And then, yes, the next video come up, and then you see uh, the new book of Alec Ramosi uh, promoting <laughs> it. And then, yeah. and, then, and, 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 and then you watch your own. Oh, I'm a one and a half hour <laughs> gone on, on YouTube, just clicking some things from videos. Yeah. So that's always, that, that, that's my only social media uh, trap where I sometimes fall in. Now, and what I'm now doing, if I Google for a solution, I skip the YouTube videos because I know yeah, I read if it. I yeah. go to the YouTube video, it, 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 yes, it takes too long. Yeah. But that's when you like you, you build it into your brain, like kind of the trigger, how you can prevent it. And obviously, like no one is going to be perfect. It's impossible to resist all the temptation in this world. Because like ultimately, the, the economy nowadays is built on temptation. Like yeah. that's where, like the the government from the top, they you know that's how our entire environment works. If you go to the supermarket and you look on on the level of your eyes, it's always the most expensive stuff. The yeah. cheapest stuff is always at the bottom. You know, it's like it's just how everything is designed. Yes, maybe it's the last question for this podcast. What is the, uh, where do you get stress from, Erwin? I don't know. It's like I, I get stress when I'm not stressed. All right. When I wake well, up. That's a cable, man. <laughs> no, like for real. If I would wake up, I still have like something on Saturday or Sunday, I would wake up, I have all my stuff done, and I don't have an email, or I don't have anyone messaging me on Slack, I get anxious oh, because, it's it's too too, because it's too quiet. Yeah. And then that somehow gives me a kick off the butt, and then I'll grind for six, seven hours. And I always get the weirdest ideas. Yeah. That's it's like it sounds weird to say, but that's really what stresses me out. If it's quiet, that's interesting, yeah. man. I think for me, like stress stems from ambition. So, like, I think all three of us here, like, without this being like a weird flex, I think if we look at our businesses now, we could easily just cruise if we wanted to. Like, we don't necessarily need to have that next new business, that next new project, the next step in our business. Obviously, we do it because at our, you know, at its core, we're all business builders you know we enjoy the process but we don't really need to do that financially um but by actually putting yourself in a pl because we're all ambitious because we're putting ourselves in the arena again to get to that next level it causes stress but i think stress is not necessarily a bad thing i think it's actually a good thing because it keeps you alert it keeps you you know it keeps you ready for exactly to, to grow when that next step comes yeah yeah, I get always stressed from my iPhone updates. Uh, <laughs> and, and then I think, oh, I'm ne never going to wake up again. And now, <laughs> now what? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's mo for me, it's mo mostly, uh, yes, sometimes it's really updates from a computer. I think, okay, now if it's not crashing, now yeah. I'm screwed. 
and but I also want no security issues, so I always update. So that's, that's I'm the same. Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, so sometimes time management. It's um, it's too many things, or and what, what it's, uh, especially if yes, customers came in at the last moment for some changes, and they think, okay, the goal was to finish this work day, and now new things coming in. That gives them sometimes stress. Okay, I want to do it at the best way for the customer, but always want to do my own my free time thing, my family thing. That's sometimes what I think, okay, mm-hmm. that's that's difficult. And then finding the right mix from, okay, when you, how do you serve your customer best? And also respect your own time management. That, that's sometimes my, my biggest stress. Yeah. I think, okay, now there's an email coming in or Slack message or WhatsApp, mm-hmm. IMS, whatever. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, I need to answer this now. Yeah, well, then, then it's maybe it's sort of solved. Yeah. But also get new questions. So always finding the right balance in how fast do you respond? And if you respond too fast, you get sometimes a slow chat, but it was also time yeah. consuming. So mm-hmm. that's sometimes what I'm also looking for. Okay, what's not the best way to get this done? Yeah, because yeah. how do you balance that? Exactly. Um, what, what I try to do, is sometimes I see a notification coming in and sometimes I know the answer right away. And for my customers, it's maybe not nice to hear this, but I f- wait for mostly 15 minutes yeah. before I answer because I want to prevent the slow chat. What I see, a nice example last week. I didn't do that, so I answered directly, and they changed their their thing based on my discussion three times. So I was wasting one hour on chat and doing some work for them. Yeah. And in the end, result was okay. Uh, maybe you don't do do it at all. And I was thinking, okay. After all that, it was a mm, big, big lesson yeah. for me. The customer had an ID. Just send it to me. I responded within a minute. Yeah. But if I maybe waited 15 minutes, the customer already realized by themselves. Okay, maybe it did was not a good plan. No, exactly. So it's interesting you should say that though, because if I let's say I'm I'm looking at a new software and I have a question, I'll message support. Usually they'll say, okay, we'll email you or we'll get back to you within 24 hours. So with the, after, after that I get that message, I'll then go on Google and try and figure it out myself. Nine times out of 10, I will find a way, either a YouTube video yep. um, or you know someone's put up a blog post or anything like that. So then that whole conversation source becomes obsolete. You no longer need to have that conversation with support. And yes. it's, it's, you're kind of doing the same thing, but then on your other side of the spectrum, you're giving the, your clients the opportunity to figure it out by themselves. So you don't necessarily need to be you know the one giving the answer. But that's yeah. like, if you think about it, it's interesting that then the standard somehow in business has become that you respond instantly. Yeah. But if you go to that business themselves and you try to reach customer support, it's not instant. It's not instant. No. no. Which is pretty pretty yeah. interesting. Yes, and I also someone told me, I don't know what it was, but he said, okay, sometimes you can better leave an email waiting for a few days before answering it. Sometimes it will answer itself. Yeah. And that's it's also true. And, that's, and, that, and that's what I do. And that's sometimes maybe not fair, but because I think okay, sometimes you get questions and I think, okay, yeah. Um, Maybe uh, I will leave it a day and then I mail them back as a still your question. Sometimes I do, I do because I think, okay, this is so complex thing. They ask me, I think, okay, do you really want this? Yeah. And I always try to answer that kind of emails with one sentence. Yeah. Because, and I always hope that people always send me also one sentence emails. Keep it as short as possible. Straight yeah. to the point. Just make to it ma- instant, yeah. Make it instant, to make it easy to do. Yeah. Not always possible, but yeah, that's uh, that's the goal. And what I said about the 15 minutes, it doesn't mean that they answer every notification within 15 no, minutes but, oh, but just if it's seeing it coming in and sometimes i start typing and think, okay no no wait then, yeah, yeah exactly. then there's no way uh, there's a hurry in my agency that it needs to be fixed in within 15 minutes no they, it's not like their business is going to explode they no do no not it's impossible within 15 no, minutes. No, no yeah it's interesting as well because obviously now um so we've recently had uh, uh our first child so we've got a newborn at home congratulations uh, yeah. thank you thank you and so we already discussed this during lunch, right? I blocked my calendar off for a few weeks. So no client was able to um, basically call me or schedule in a Zoom meeting. Um, I have continued with the business, but I, you know, alongside that, I'm not gonna be on Zoom calls because it's hard to schedule in Zoom calls when you got this this little crying alien you know, in the house. So uh, a lot of clients still tried to book in a call. They say, hey, you know, try to book in a call, but the next opportunity available is like the third of the next month. I'm like, well, yeah, that's the next time I'm actually available for calls. Um, but if you want to you know, speak sooner, just send me a message on Slack and then I'll get to it or I'll send you a Loom video. And apart from one client, all my clients sort of accepted that. Um, and I realized that a lot of these meetings that they tried to schedule in or a lot of these um, questions that they had sort of resolved themselves either by uh, them realizing, okay, he's not immediately available. I'll try and figure it out 
or just by them sending the message in the chat mm-hmm. and then let me answer when I have the opportunity to. Yes, yeah, so I think that's also very important. That's also because it's uh, we we started with stress and then we moved from to time management, but. And uh, I deleted almost all our phone numbers. We uh, our agency doesn't have any phone number anymore. Of course, yeah. we have a direct cell phones for for some clients really like to call us, but we also explain them that yes, doing a call is really it's it's getting in. You need to answer at that moment. So we always make it a text message or mm-hmm. just an email. And but I think it's it's also like a little bit maybe respect to a certain extent, because like I, I would depending on the relationship, of course, you have with them. But the majority, I would never call unless I know they accept it. Like yeah. I would have asked them beforehand, like, hey, if stuff like this happens, are you fine with me calling you or do you prefer this? Yeah. But it's like, if someone doesn't ask me that and boom, they, they keep bl- blaming me and emailing me and calling yeah. me, like, you know, it just becomes annoying and also disrespectful. And I think that kind of comes to, to the point there is like, I think it's also culture a bit because I think it's more for the Netherlands. Yeah. It yeah. seems I to be more agree. of a Dutch yeah. thing. Yeah. Where it's like somehow, so. boom, they need to call. Which is fine, obviously, if you clarify with the other person, like, hey, yeah, that is fine. You know, but sure, you can call me, etc. But if you just, boom, straight away go in and start blaring people, like, it's a little bit weird, you know? Yeah. Yes, and, 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 and what we also found out, because when we make phone calls harder for our customers, that we, what, what I say, with, um, with, when they get a message in, it gives them at least 15 minutes to think about it before yep. we answer. Um, if you make phone calls harder, they also never call because they also okay. I call for this one, maybe I can solve it myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and, th- and that's the reason that we yes we, we face where they have phone the, the direct phone system. And we have of course you have direct chat, and there are many ways to reach to us. But the, the phone is the most disturbing thing. Exactly, hundred percent. And I think yeah. that's where a, a nice thing would be because we talk you know about hey uh, blocking notifications etc. If there's one thing I hate is if someone huddles you on Slack. Like I've no. tried to turn it off. There's no option for it. So if there's anyone listening to this yeah. who knows how you can physically turn off that someone can hold you on Slack, please message me. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. I have the same. Yes, I have the same with, with in Europe. It's WhatsApp. Uh, WhatsApp uh, really known to use, and I yeah. really don't like WhatsApp calls. I almost never answer them because now with the new iOS update. You have the official voicemail, so if people yeah. start talking in your voicemail, you can see what they're saying, and you can actually answer the call doing for mm-hmm. the, like the old exactly. fashioned voicemail yeah, from your uh, uh, and iPhone. I, and I can and clarify this because when I was in Mallorca with him, if yeah. I would voice call him with WhatsApp, the dude would just leave me on read. <laughs> but if I call him through iMessage, it's instant. Yes, <laughs> as jokes. And and and, and that's the the uh, yes. I really like the iPhone ecosystem because it works nice. But yeah. if someone's using Facebook Messenger to call you or Instagram DMs. It's so many sources one. of, in that case, mm. also some stress. Then they get yeah. some, okay, and and where's that that agreement we made? Or, or, or uh, yes, it's, it's, it's uh, difficult sometimes, all these sources of uh, incoming communication. Yeah. yeah, I think probably that's why, I think a great way we can conclude it. I think just definitely recommend everyone, you know, hey, uh, find a way to truly teach yourself, like how do I plan time? Yeah, and I think just with exactly, I think with stress as well, it's like it's kind of like you know that voice battle that happens in your head. It's like ask yourself like the question, okay, why am I stressed about this? Like ultimately, I think for a lot of entrepreneurs, they need to realize like what is the worst that can happen. Yeah, like in all honesty. Yeah, there's that diagram, right? Like, um, uh, are you worried? Yes. Can you control it? No. Then don't be worried. And <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Everything basically leads yeah. down to don't be worried. Exactly. Well, it's like the you know if this then that. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's true, right? Like if you can control the outcome or if you can control the situation, then by putting it off, you're just causing yourself more stress. If you tackle it right away, you know you can resolve the stress. But if it's uncontrollable, then that's okay to just say, okay, you know, that exactly. is what it is. And then let it go, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.